Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. It is week four of the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge and this is about the halfway point. And I want to say just making these videos, I never realized how much rice my family eats. So let's get into this week's What We Eat. So tonight I'm going to make chili. I have things from my co-room downstairs. I have a thing of stewed tomatoes I did in 2001. I have uh, kidney beans that I did in 2019 and then I have one lone jar of chili beans and that's the beans and the tomatoes and everything and the spices and everything in there together already done up ready to go for the chili base so I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna use this keystone beef and I'm using this because somebody dropped it can you see that yeah so um i'm gonna use that because it's dented and i don't want um it to fail on the shelf and be lost so i'm gonna use it up before it um the seal fails so i'm going to make a big pot of chili and it will probably hold us over for a day or two definitely um uh, a day maybe lunch if not dinner enough for dinner the next day so here's what my beef looks like. It looks good, smells good, tastes good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So I just started dumping everything into the pot. It comes together so quickly with the home canned beans that within 20 minutes, half an hour, with a simmer, you could be eating. So this was great on this cold winter day. So I'm just putting in my stewed tomatoes. In goes my beans making sure I get all that out I know people rinse their beans um, you know what I don't I put everything in all the juices everything from my jars nine times out of ten the only thing I don't do is potatoes but everything else I use that juice um, that's on my um, home can items so in goes my spices and my secret ingredient when I'm using potato, I'm sorry, tomato products is a little bit of sugar. In this case, it's some brown sugar. So I've got all my spices in. I'm going to mix it and then I'm going to let it simmer for about 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. And I'm going to clean up my fridge while I'm doing this. I have some leftovers from um two nights ago uh dinner so i'm just gonna put those in too so in goes my keystone beef broth and all i am just breaking it up and i did put a couple of my frozen bouillon cubes in here or bouillon whatever um and that just gives it a sort of all day cooked taste and this is what the chili looks like this night. We put it with some homemade bread and it was so delicious on this cold, cold night. So this night I added in a couple of handfuls of rice. I've added pasta, you can put in corn, whatever you like, it can stretch it and make it more filling. So once a week I make bread and I just thought I would bring you along as I make it. I will put the recipe in the description box below so in my mixing bowl goes my water um, adding in my sugar and then I'm going to add in my yeast so no matter what kind of yeast I'm using whether it's the instant yeast or the dry active yeast I always blew my yeast and sometimes well they say the instant one you don't have to but I do anyhow um, I've had one experience where it didn't and it was the instant and it didn't work so yeah so I just bloom it no matter what so here's my yeast bloomed and I'm going to get the rest of my ingredients dry milk my flour and my salt and my butter and pretty much that's it I have this quick easy recipe and I add in my sourdough discard and that's how I'm using up a lot of this sourdough discard um, nowadays so yeah I'm going to get all this put in and we're gonna get my dough made just making sure that I leave enough sourdough in my container for the next feeding
So I wait till my dough comes to about this point where it's coming together and I actually stop it at this point. This is about two minutes in and I scrape down my bowl. Actually, I scrape more like the bottom of it because I find that with this KitchenAid, there's flour that gets stuck under there. So I scrape it down at this point. So I'm about five minutes in or so now and you can see it's really coming together and I'm going to add in my salt and butter and that's my last ingredient to go in and once that's incorporated in my dough is done and this is what it looks like when it's done my bowl is nice and clean and it's ready to come out. So at this point as you can see the dough is nice and smooth and it easily slides off the dough hook. So at this point my dough has been kneading for a total of 8 minutes and it's not really at all sticky to the touch. It is a little bit sticky but not where you have to add any more flour. I'm going to take it out of this bowl if I can get it out. <laughs> get it into a bowl um, and then I'm going to use this same mixing bowl that I just mixed it in. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in it and oil my dough bowl and I'm going to put it in a nice warm place for me that's my oven with the light on and I'm gonna let it rise for about an hour and a half to two hours my kitchen is kind of on the cold side I'm going to cover it with some cling wrap and just let it sit while I do other things so here it is risen to more than double its size I'm going to punch it down and get it rolled out and into my Pullman loaf pan. I'm not going to add any flour to my surface because the oil that I put on the bread will help it to stop sticking to my counter while I'm rolling it out. And I'm just using my top for my Pullman loaf pan to make sure I'm rolling it out to the width that I need it. So now that I have my edges closed up and everything rolled out to the width I needed, I'm going to put it into my pan. Now I have greased my pan with butter. I know a lot of people say don't use butter because it burns. I've always used butter. I like the taste of butter. And yeah, so I grease my pan with butter. And I'm just pushing it down just to help it spread out in the pan a little bit better. Just to get... Um, sort of uh, uniform rise out of it I find that when I do this it comes out better there's no kind of wonky sides or lower side so into my oven it goes for about 30 minutes to a half an hour uh, half an hour and 30 minutes is the same thing yeah so about 45 minutes and this is what it looks like after 45 minutes it is ready to be baked on so 30 minutes in a 350 degree preheated oven and this is what it looks like yes i slather more butter on my bread we like butter so i'm just putting butter it's cooled about 10 50 minutes and i just put butter on it then i'm going to turn it out onto a cooling rack and i'm going to put some butter on the sides i will let this cool completely before we cut it in into it for dinner and this is what it looks like um, I don't see any burned spots on it and I would say using butter if you want to go right ahead I use butter in my pan and it works just fine so now on to the sweet treat for this week I have my oven on so I might as well do it at the same time I'm gonna try these egg replacements that I have here and we're gonna make a box cake now this calls for three eggs so I'm going to make the equivalent of three eggs with these egg replacer. I'm going to replace the water with milk. And yeah, we're going to try to see how this works. So I have the measurements for the eggs. I actually added in an extra egg. So there's actually four in here. Pulled out my trusty mixer and we're going to get this mixing. So dump everything in and ready to go.
So I added a bit of lemon extract to this butter box cake just to do a plain sort of a lemon pound cake. And the egg repaser looked kind of nasty, but it looks like it's working. So into my pan it goes with some nonstick spray. It smells good. So hopefully it keeps our fingers crossed that it turns out good. So just get it in and bake it to the recommended time. And here is our sweet treat for the week. I put a little bit of lemon glaze on the top and it will, I will say it tastes pretty good. Here's my piece while well, what I have left of my piece. It is super moist, so I will say those eggs did the trick. So one thing that did happen, it didn't rise as much as I had hoped, but it was my okay. fault because I actually opened the oven and when I went to close it, the oven door kind of slipped, so it kind of banged and I could see it. Okay. Um, just deflating and it took away from it a little bit it wasn't as nice and um, light and fluffy but it still tasted good so that in the end was all that mattered so another sweet treat this week was hot chocolate homemade well not really homemade I put the ingredients together myself but yeah and um, of course I didn't make the cream here but yeah it was pretty good you don't do this every night so this is like a special treat for us and I just sprinkled some uh, colored sugar over the top to make it a little special. So for tonight's dinner, I'm going to be making these pierogies. I found them in my freezer and I'm going to make them. I have potato and cheddar and this one is beef and Swiss. So I'm just going to get these going and I'm going to put a side of probably veg or some kind of starch on the side. So all I'm going to do is cook up some onions and some garlic and some other spices and get them uh, just sort of softened. Take them out and then just put in my pierogi to the same uh, pan so it can soak up all that essence of the garlic and the onion. And these are really easy to do. They just put them in the pan with some butter and cook them, uh, ground them on each side for about two minutes or so. And then I turn the heat down, put a top on them and let them cook all the way through. And they are really, really good really good so that's what it's gonna be for tonight I'm probably gonna put some rice with it and then maybe a veg or whatever we decide so they are browned on both sides I put a little bit more butter in and then I'm just gonna put my top on and leave them to cook off so once they are completely cooked through I just add my onion and spices back into the pan and let them sit there with the pierogies for a couple of seconds and I'm going to serve this with a side of rice and broccoli tonight. So tonight we are going to make some quesadillas and keeping with the theme of cleaning out my fridge and freezer I have my tortillas from the freezer and everything else from the fridge. I have some leftover pasta sauce, some pepperoni, some peppers, and some hamburger from the cold room, cheese, and of course I'm going to pair it with, you guessed it, rice on the side. So yeah, we're going to get these cooking. And I put down a little bit of butter. Yep, butter. <laughs> and I'm going to, the first side, I'm going to sort of warm it on each side before I start filling um, the quesadilla. Um, and this is how I do it. Do you do it the way you do it? This is the way I do it. And it's going to help me use up uh, some things that are lingering around in my fridge get my freezer um, items going as well and I'm going to make this quick and easy dinner you could do this for lunch um, I guess you could do it for breakfast if you want maybe with an egg uh, so they're kind of versatile and that's what I like about these if I'm in a pinch and I just need a quick dinner or a quick lunch it's great to use for either of those so I'm just gonna warm this one on both sides before I start filling it.
here they are sheeted 180 rice so i'm just serving it with sour cream and some green salsa that i made in 2020 so i'm just going to put a dollop of that on the plate and we are good to go this took all of i'm just about quick and easy especially um on the weekends when you cooked all week you don't feel like cooking anymore yeah i'm just going to do that so going forward for the next um month our videos are probably going to get a little shorter because we're going to be repeating what we ate previously and i know you don't want to see that again so yeah i'll just record what i haven't cooked for the month of january for february Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload videos. Thank you very much and have a great day.